So understanding our triggers is so important. And I just wanna take some time to clarify triggers. And again, I'll be vulnerable and share some of my own personal experience. You know, we're talking about the abandonment triggers, right? Now, abandonment triggers is not very often going to show up as saying to somebody physically, no, 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 don't leave me. I'm struggling with abandonment issues. That's not how that's going to come out. How abandonment triggers will play out is we will begin to push people away before they can pull away from us because that mental program that we have says that this person is going to leave us or I am going to lose something. It doesn't have to necessarily only be in relationships, but that's very often how it shows up. And so that abandonment trigger will actually be expressed as us pushing somebody else away because to push them away, although that would hurt, hurts far less than them leaving us, them abandoning us. And so obviously we could go through the list of different triggers and all of the different ways that this would come out. But I think it's important to provide that clarification that triggers, whatever they may be, there's like the surface level and then there's underneath as to how that's going to be expressed. And it almost is paradoxical in the sense of, well, I have abandonment issues, but I'm going to push somebody else away. Well, that doesn't make sense. Ah, but the program says push them away before they can pull away from you. And so there's this push and pull and back and forth that will often go on with abandonment triggers. And so I think it's important, again, whether that's having a vulnerable conversation with your spouse or with your partner, or even engaging in counseling. So you can get a better understanding of, hey, okay, what are some of these communication patterns? What are some of these behavior patterns where, gosh, somebody said this to me, I was feeling this, but then I went and actually did something far different. And so it's very important to take that time to lean into ourself and to think about, okay, well, here's what I was thinking, here's what I was feeling, and then here's what I actually did. Whoa, that doesn't quite match up, and here I am still left feeling sad, feeling abandoned, feeling lonely, whatever the case may be. So really leaning into understanding the fact of, okay, I've got those surface level emotions, right? But then I've got what's really going on underneath the surface. As we were speaking about with the steam is different than the water, right? That kind of outward expression is often much different than what's going on underneath the surface. And another big part of this is having an open conversation with our partner to say, hey, when you do this, it makes me feel this way. Now, it's important to say that this is not done in an accusatory way, right? Well, when you do this, it makes me feel like this. No, these are vulnerable, open, curious type of conversations. Hey, I noticed to me the other day when you said this, it started to make me feel this inside. Would you be willing to help me to unpack that? I'm sure it wasn't your intention to make me feel this, but gosh, I was really struggling with that afterwards. Little conversations like this, guys, little touch points, little emotional check-ins, little vulnerable shares can not only drastically improve our marriage, but it can really help us to get a better understanding of ourself. You see, if we want to show up better in relationships, if we want to be able to better navigate emotions or to show up more vulnerable, the most important thing to understand is ourselves.